With us right now, Matt Rosenthal. Matt, you're the CEO of MindCore, uh, and you're found on the web at mind-core.com. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. This is going to be really, really exciting. You have great energy, so I know this is going to be a lot of fun. Listen, man, I can geek out with just about anything. <laughs> if I, and and so uh, obviously you're helping a lot of great businesses. Um, you provide IT services, but but give us the overview of how MindCore works. So MindCore is it's evolved over the years. Um, anybody in in my business in the IT field, you know that you have to pivot, you have to evolve. It's like every three, four, or five years, like it, you just get it gets stale. People look at you as a commodity. So um, who we are today, where we focus on cybersecurity, we, so, uh, we, so focus, we focus on cloud and we focus on collaboration tools. So the easiest thing to, look, to say is it's the three C's that every business needs now, uh, especially in light of what has changed with COVID and the hybrid work from home, work from the office, work from anywhere. Uh, before it was like something we used to try and convince people to do to be mobile and agile. And now it's like, you have to be mobile and agile. Yeah. So um, we do all of the traditional IT support um, functions, day-to-day -day IT support. Um, that's all still there. You know, you need a server built, we'll build a server. But it's not really about that for us. It's about trusted advisor, um, strategic guidance type of, of mindset. And then rolling that into, okay, where's your business going? What are you looking to do in the next one, three, five years? And how does cloud collaboration tools and cybersecurity, you know, fit into that? Because it has to. And yeah. that's what the conversation is now. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what a um, what a great industry to be in, you know, over the past year, year and a half. Um, and the headlines, man, they just keep getting scarier and scarier and scarier. If you don't have a team watching your back when it comes to security. Um, you know, you know, as of when we're recording this now, you know, the um the ransomware. Uh, incidents. Um, what, a, what a nightmare scenario for uh, a company, a municipality. You know, I mean, it's just, my gosh, the people that have been getting hit with this, you know, cyber terrorism. And who would think that it would affect, you know, a small town in Texas, for example, <laughs> but it, but it's, but it's happening. You know, look, these, these people are, they're business people, you know, it doesn't matter what country they're from. They're very smart. They're very well organized. They run their enterprises like big businesses because they are. They develop software. They have, um, you know, VARs, VAR relationships like that sort of go down the channel where they're reselling software to smaller and smaller businesses. Mm. And those businesses are going after all of our businesses, yeah. right? Proportionally. Um, they know how to come after you. They know our, um, I think the word is social engineering. They know how we behave, how people behave. And they, they are masters at putting together emails that seem like they're emails you should be paying attention to and clicking a link on. It's just a numbers game. They know enough people are going to click a link and, you know, whether it's a FedEx or Microsoft or, or um, a UPS looking link, or mm. it could be something um, just that looks like an invoice from, from, from a customer. You know, they, they know it. They know how to get you. And, mm. uh, and they know once they've got you, they've got you. And you're, so the question winds up being, if that happens to you, do you need to pay the ransom and then hope that you get your data back? Because once you actually acknowledge them and they know that you, you need what they have, they start upping the ante, right? At first, it's like a quarter of a Bitcoin, then it's a half, then it's a whole, then it's, it's more and more and more. That's the game they play. So wouldn't it be easier and doesn't make more sense to just have a, a plan in place to, to proactively you, you know, um, mitigate the risk of, of what inevitably is going to happen? You will be breached. It's a matter mm -hmm. of when you're breached, do you care? Right? I don't mean, you know, of course you care, but do you really care about somebody saying that, 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 you know, it's one Bitcoin for your data? No. What you care about is that you invested up front. It's a lot cheaper to, um, to mitigate than it is to remediate. And that's what it comes down to, you know? So it, it's, it's not going away. It's getting more and more and more prevalent because people are not listening. Businesses are still... Uh, wide open. Look at what just happened with, uh, with the Colonial Pipeline. Right, everybody knows about that one. Yeah, they mm. paid. They paid a ransom. I think I just read yesterday it was eleven million dollars. All right, unless I'm confusing with the wrong the wrong breach, but I think it was eleven million dollars. I did a webinar about two weeks ago, which is now online. You can, you can watch it. And I had on as a guest of mine um, 
a gentleman named Brian, who used to be the head of cybersecurity for the Pentagon. He was the top guy in the Pentagon for, for a long time, five years, I think, under uh, Obama administration. He explained how this all works. It, it's, it's not it, um, complicated. They're, they're going after people that they know have not um, done their housekeeping. And the reality is most people have not done their housekeeping. They, they're not doing the most basic, obvious things. Yeah. And so why would they stop? They're making a fortune. You got me going on that topic, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's so well, simple. Look. Yeah. So, uh, the, so let's say the average, uh, can you give me maybe a, uh, maybe a, a client profile or two type of people that you work with, sure. where you come in and, and what is it that you actually do to uh, keep the, the wheels of business going? So our client profile, first of all, we can help any client really of any size, which is, now I know it's broad, but a typical client for us is probably one of two cases. Uh, start with the, the larger one first. It's, some, it's a company that already has an IT director that has a CIO, uh, probably has an IT team in-house and they're busy. Like they're busy with the day-to-day, -day. you know, they're plugging all the holes, all the leaks, trying to put out the fires and they really can't focus on the initiatives that require attention. A cybersecurity project, um, a big rollout, you know, a, a cloud migration. Like they bring us in for things like that because we're kind of like the SWAT team. We come in, we know exactly what to do, we get it done. Um, we're getting a lot of companies like that who are reaching out to us, asking us to do um, cybersecurity planning for them, right? So that's happening a lot, along with along with uh, migrations to Microsoft Office 365 and Teams, you know, Microsoft phone system. That's a huge thing happening right now. Then you have a smaller organization, which doesn't really have a budget for a full-time IT staff and they outsource everything to us. So we'll act as their virtual CIO, <clears throat> making, uh, giving them all the guidance, knowledge, experience, and um, you know, budget and risk management and all that, all those, those sort of executive, you know, executive boardroom conversations. That's where we begin with them. And then we will determine what exactly they need from us. Right. They may need us to put somebody on site full time. They may not. They may just need us to give them um, remote support. They may need us to deliver managed service products, uh, proactive management, security patches, antivirus, you know, um, email uh, filtering, uh, spam filtering. I mean, it could be anything. Usually they'll take all of that from us because they don't want to deal with it. They just want somebody that they know and that they can trust. Those are pretty much the two um, that we see now the smaller one can range from a five person company to 150 person company, uh -huh. a law firm, an accounting firm, a financial services firm, a hedge fund. I'm thinking of all different clients. We have construction companies, PR firms. They're all in that small business um, size. Then you have, again, the ones that are, are larger. We have clients that are three, four, 500 people. Um, we do one of the largest sports governing bodies in the world. I'm not allowed to say who they are, Mm -hmm. um, I'm prohibited by them, but you know, there's, there's, you can think of all the football, tennis, you can think of all the different governing bodies. One of those, we do all of their IT support in their, in their main headquarters. So it really depends on, on what the leadership in the company needs and whether or not they trust us and believe in us and have faith in us to give us the opportunity to solve their problem. Yeah. It's broad, but we do it all. Yeah. Um, so Listen, I, I let's say you're a SaaS company, um, and you know you're doing, you're hosting on AWS. I mean, you're you kind of doing the standard things like, hey, well, you know, we use Cloudflare or you know some basic protection. Is that not enough today? Probably not. You know, it's it's. I mean, if you think about it, okay, maybe you've got that in place. What are you doing to train your employees? You know, to avoid needing to to go do a restore from a cloud backup, you know, is, is there, it's an element of an entire recipe and that recipe is the, the resiliency. It's the, uh, the posture, <clears throat> it's that strong perimeter. And, and that's where the VCIO conversation comes back. It's somebody has to be looking at the whole picture. So yes, that's, that might be a good product for somebody. And that product might solve one of the 15 elements of what you should be doing. It may not. It may just have been something somebody chose because it was the cheapest one. Is anybody actually trying it out? Is anybody doing restores? Is anybody doing, uh, you know, quarterly um, testing to see if what you think you bought even works? I'm telling you, for the most part, the answer is no. Mm.
Yeah. And that's where you need somebody to hold you accountable. I often right. will turn to people. I, I know it takes, um, I have, I used to be afraid to, to, to say what I really needed to say to people years ago uh, to clients of mine, because I don't want them to get upset uh, way past that. Now it's, it's, mm. you got to have the courage to look the COO or the CFO or the CEO of, uh, in the face and say, listen, are you, are you really looking to be held accountable? I, I'm here to hold you accountable. I'm here yeah. to look out for you. And frankly, you know, what you're doing is, is, I don't know, it's one fraction of what you should be doing. And, um, you know, for me to do my job, I have to hold you accountable. And honestly, I got to tell you, you should be doing this, 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 and this just being in cloud flare isn't enough. It's yeah. just not. And I want you to know that the risks of not doing other things you should be doing can be quantified. And let me tell you about that, you know? Yeah. And if they get upset, they get upset. You know what? Let them get upset. They have to know. Yeah, I want yeah. my insurance guy to tell me. I don't want him to uh, yeah, tell me no the cheapest kidding. option. I right. want, don't, I don't want to pay as little as possible. Matt, yeah, exactly. You don't want an IT consultant to sugarcoat things for you and like, eh, you know, don't worry about that. You know, just, no, no you want afraid. someone, you want to hire someone who's constantly worrying. <laughs> that, that, that's right. You want somebody who's got a little worry, a little fear, a little anxiety. It's like in a healthy way. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> You, you, you need to know, you need to know. So you're, I, I got news for you. It's so common in our industry for um, people to look for the cheapest solution to present mm -hmm. to, um, to a customer because they're afraid to tell them that the real solution that they really need. Yeah. It costs a lot more than they thought it, something was going to cost, but so fine. So show them the difference. Say, look, you can go with this. You can go with this. Here's the pros. Here's the cons. And you know, I recommend you go with this. Yes, it's more expensive, but it's going to it's gonna save you a lot down the road because of yeah. the problems that you could potentially avoid. You put a fire alarm in a building, not because you're hoping for a fire. <laughs> you pay the annual maintenance and you get the smoke detectors and the pull stations and all that stuff tested. I used to be a volunteer fireman mm. for 15 years. So the, those analogies kind of come out of me. <laughs> you, you do that because you don't want to pay for the damage after the fire. It's yeah. cheaper to pay to avoid the fire. Yeah. You got it. You got it. People have to know and you can't be afraid to tell them. Yeah. You know, speaking of which, you know, in terms of like, you know, other solutions out there, one thing I've noticed about IT services um, is, is I get a lot of spam <laughs> from, from <laughs> IT companies club. who knows where they're based. I mean, who knows what they're, I mean, it's like cold out of nowhere. I don't know what it is about IT services, why that is just such a I don't want to say a spammy industry, but how have you been able to grow and, and what's your approach to customer acquisition? You cut out a little bit. Just ask me the beginning of the question again. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, again, a lot of it's, it's, there's a lot of spam amongst, you know, some IT companies, but, but what has, uh, you know, what has MindCore done for customer acquisition? Like how do people get to know you? What do you do for marketing? Oh, oh okay. I thought your question was about spam. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a problem too. To, <laughs> we try not to be the spam emails. Uh, my approach to I've done that. You know, we've, we've gone down that path. I've tried a lot of things over the years, and yeah. frankly, the one thing that's always worked um, because it's authentic and it's real is old school networking, meeting people, yeah. um, meeting business owners. Even during um, you know the lockdown, there were still ways to do that. But for me, what it's evolved into, I'm a big fan of people like Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, you know, he's Gary V is a, a pretty well-known guy in business. He built a huge business, but a lot of people like him using social media to draw awareness. And so that's what I started doing about four years ago. Um, and it's been a slow process because I've had to learn it and get comfortable with it. I'm an IT guy. I don't like being on camera. You know, it took mm -hmm. me, it took me a while to get used to it, but that's really what it is for us. Now. I don't do a lot of email marketing. Um, it, I don't want to be that company that's, that's just stuck in the pile of like, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's commoditizing who we are and what we really do. And we're not a commodity. We really are a strategic advisor. And there's a true value in that. And the only way that I know now to deliver and to get across what that value is, is to do things like I have a, a show coming out actually in two weeks called Digging In, which is going to be a once a week show where I interview people and uh, successful people. And those people have built multi-million dollar businesses and they've got secrets to tell. And it's, so I'm doing that because by people seeing and hearing that, they learn about not just my guest, but they learn about me and they get to trust me and they get to 
to see the depth of, of, of my knowledge and, and which is an extension of, of the company. You know, Mindcore is me. I am Mindcore. All of my employees, my entire team, we all have the same belief system. So by experiencing me on social media, that's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on um, where, all, where all the podcasts go. You have to ask my marketing company. It's going everywhere. But that's, mm. that's a way for people to, to, um, to get to know me. We're doing, I do, shoot, at this point, I think it's like once a day I get on and I'll talk about something, for example, like hope is not a strategy. I'll get on and I'll just talk into my phone. And I'll put that out there. I'll put it out on LinkedIn. I'll talk about how you need a plan of action. You can't just hope for things to happen because there's no such thing as, as magic. Things don't just happen. So if you want to solve a cybersecurity problem, you can't just hope it's going to be okay. You need to put a, a plan in place. So I do a lot of that. And um, mm -hmm. I'm ramping that up by about 10x. Um, it's, it's in progress. So that's what I'm doing. I could talk about that for two hours in yeah. myself. But um, there's a lot of blogs. There's a lot of articles I write. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a lot of webinars now. I'm trying to inform and I'm trying to educate people. And that is now beginning to find its way back to me because people are reaching out to me because they do see me and experience me. I don't think there's anything better than that. And I can't, I can't get that vibe across in an email. Trust and confidence. My dog's barking in the background. I apologize. Nah, I love it. I love it. Get, let, let, let the dogs, let the doggies bark. Um, <laughs> Matt Rosenthal, um, again, your website is mind-core.com. Uh, when folks go there, what, what would you recommend that they do? I recommend that they, there's just hundreds of pages there. Honestly, there's a little box that pops up as soon as you go on there and it asks you a question. Uh, one of those little bots, put your name in, put your, uh, your phone number in and let me give you a call. Um, and what you do with that is you bounce any question you want off of me. If you, if you, if you watch my podcast, we talk about, we talk about health. We talk about fitness. We talk about diet. We talk about it. Um, you want to call me and ask me about how I stay in shape. Feel free to call me and ask me. You want to ask about it? Just give me a call. We'll talk. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Matt Rosenthal, again, CEO of MindCore uh, uh, on the web at mind-core.com. Matt, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Hopefully Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. I listen, I hope we have improved some security out there. We have kept someone in business as a result of our conversation. Listen, hope is not a strategy. You got to do something, put something in place, talk to somebody, cybersecurity, number one risk to your business. Yep. I believe it. All right. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. Thank you.